What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Golem Overlord content today. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys. I want to talk about uh, an idea that I had uh, now that I've di dove deeper a little bit into Golem Overlord and just trying to understand the whole ecosystem. I still feel very new. I don't understand all the stats, all the different things that you can level up. Uh, but one thing that has been on my mind are these events and how we can potentially utilize, well, not we, but uh, Yixin and the development team can utilize these events to create interesting periods of deflation. So, you know, in the last month that Golem Overlord has been out, we have seen many changes, you know, major changes to the tokenomics. We've seen a bunch of changes in terms of just development and things being added to the game. And we've seen these events. And I, I look at these events as uh, I like to use the term Swiss Army knife, right, that I use for like land and splinterlands, where it can just be something that gives a little bit utility or takes away some utility from uh, certain aspects of the game whenever the situation calls for it. So one thing that we always talk about, uh, or at least that I've been constantly talking about, is the inflation issue, right? This is uh, infinitely inflationary, and we just recently moved the minimum burn from 75% up to 80%. Let's actually see if that's in-game now. Uh, yep. So now if you burn less than 80% of what you claim, your earnings will be reduced by that amount. Big penalty below 50% and no claim below 25%. So the idea that I had, and um, I, I got to be very careful with this. Well, not me, but I, I think uh, Yixon will have to be really careful with this because it could do a lot of pump and dump potentially. And so what you'd want to do is have it maybe be on like a schedule. But if there were periods or events that essentially became uh, deflationary in nature uh, for the part token, and what I mean by that is right now, you're required to burn 80% of what you earn. Well, what if there was an event that went on for three days, maybe, maybe it goes on for like an entire week, where your burn rate actually becomes 100% or more? So in that way, it's just like, okay, well now in order to continue earning, you actually have to burn like 101%. So that's going to require people to go out and buy part on the secondary market. Now, you why, why would people do that? They'd probably be really upset or, you know, uh, they'd feel like they were just getting cheated out of the game. But the way that you could incentivize this, and keep in mind, this is all this is a game first and foremost, right? So the way that you could incentivize this is by offering a, a time period where maybe the the burn rate or the burn amount jumps up to 100% or you know maybe even slightly more than 100% but there are there's like a discount on scavenger golems right so we just had the scavenger golems pop in now they're 10, 10 per what if you wanted to like upgrade your scavenger golems and so for this period of time you're going to get a reduced amount right of uh, well you're still going to get the same amount emitted but you're going to have a deflationary period where a bunch of part is going to get burned because it has to get burned and people will be incentivized to burn it because then they can get more scavenger golems and maybe scavenger golems aren't the best example because when you uh, uh when whenever you get those that will increase the amount of uh, of part that's earned so as soon as the event is over all of a sudden people are earning a bunch more um, and once and once again, like I said, there will be, you know, it could create these kind of pump and dump environments where uh, especially, you know, again, from lo looking at this from a regulatory perspective, it's like, well, who has the inside knowledge of when these events start and when they when they begin, when they end? Because it's like, well, if you know that, you know, let's say I, I know, for example, Shard Rush is going to be over in an hour or one day in 12 hours, um, you know, if there's a very small group of people that find out that, hey, the next one's going to be like a deflationary event. Uh, let me load up on part now, not because I plan on burning it, but because it's, you know, 50 cents right now. And I have a feeling that it could jump at least, you know, 10, 15, 20%, maybe even more than that, right? Because people are going to rush in to make sure that they have enough part. So there would have to be something there that, uh, you know, the best, the easiest and most crude way that I can think of it is like, this gets announced, this actually gets decided in a live format, and the, the date gets announced well in advance. So there isn't this whole like, okay, who had the inside info, right? It, it might be a, a live stream, it might be a something, it might be a random number generator that says, okay, here, we're going to do it at this time and date. Uh, we're going to pick the date, that, you know, that this event will run. And it's going to be all public and shown and whatever and ran, completely randomized. Uh, but ultimately, I think it could be something good. Although, you know, I, I'm still... 
I'm still uh, wrapping my head fully around the tokenomics. So it, it, there's, there's definitely going to be some other issues, and I know it could rub people the wrong way. But my whole point with this is that what, what's kind of nice about these loosey-goosey tokenomics and monetary policy with, with, um, <laughs> with Golem Overlord is the fact that there is so much flexibility, right? You don't have this monolith and uh, you know slow governance proposal process that something like Splinterlands has. Uh, because it is just run by the developer, right? You know, Yixin can decide what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And so being able to implement it could actually be uh, on, on a regular basis if done tastefully, right? I'm not saying that my example was the best, but if done in, if done in a way that incentivizes people to level up and do certain things in the game, maybe get other benefits, for example, right? Once uh, NFTs or other things within the game are out, then to me, that, that has a lot of potential value in many ways because all of a sudden you can have these massive deflationary periods of part where all of a sudden, you know, part just goes away. Uh, and so, uh, or the part, the, the total part supply reduces. So let's see if we go here to statistics, you know, this is the one thing that you can see uh, quite a bit where, um, you know, the, the green, the green uh, section there uh, at the top is how much is currently circulating. You can see over time, it's, it's trended to be larger. Obviously, with the 80% change, people have started burning a little bit more. Uh, but again, what could be interesting is if we get into deflationary periods, uh, we can already start burning a ton more and then use that as a way. And, may, and maybe like maybe maybe it'll be something where the deflationary periods are are set in advance where it's just like it's the third weekend of uh, of the month or it's the third week of the month if we wanted to go for an entire period. But but the the announcement would be that. Um, yeah, but, but the thing that would change is like, what are the benefits that you get in game? Maybe you get cheaper fortification, maybe you get cheaper golem charging station, cheaper faith, whatever the case is, you get certain benefits, but you just know that the part emissions are going to be, well, the part emissions will stay the same, but the part burn rate, the minimum burn rate is going to be increased for that period of time. And everybody knows it in advance, right? So you can all, everybody can front run it. If we all have the information at the same time, then it's not, you know, there's no insider info that's happening there. But again, uh, these are just some ideas that I'm throwing out there. Uh, obviously, now that I'm getting more involved in the game, I'm trying to think of ways to make it more sustainable over time so that we don't just see part go all the way to zero, right? We want part to have value. And so far, I feel like part has done a great job uh, or Yixon's done a great job with part in terms of just creating a game that people get excited about and then being very engaged in the Discord, having a lot of updates and a lot of uh, features coming in. So this is just an idea that I'm throwing out there. I'm not saying that it's perfect. Feel free to poke holes in it and suggest other better things. Uh, but I just like the idea of, of having deflationary time periods. And what I think of is is uh, as, is actually Ethereum, right? So when Ethereum first came out, one of the biggest knocks on it versus Bitcoin, right? Now I remember this back in like the 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 mid twenty the mid twenty tens, right? When Ethereum was first out, it's just like, well, Ethereum you can print unlimited amounts, right? It's just like highly inflationary, and Bitcoin has a, a cap of twenty one million, and sure you can do smart contracts on ETH, but it, it'll it'll just be mined and printed forever, right? Well, mined forever at that time. Obviously, it's, it's proof of stake now, but with all of the changes that have come to the Ethereum project, which is the number two blockchain project uh, in you know in, in the crypto space, very recently or within the past year, I'd say we I think I forgot what the upgrade was last year, but that ended up creating I, I forgot what the name of the update was, but uh, I believe it was like August or September last year where that created a deflationary ETH right? Uh, ETH emissions rate, where all of a sudden we started burning a lot more Ethereum than we were creating uh, on a regular basis. And so I don't know where that is now, but I'm just thinking about the fact that if the biggest project can do it, I'm sure there are ways in which that could be utilized here on small, uh, but hopefully very effective doses. So just a thought, I'm going to put it out there. Would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and we can continue the conversation there. But that is all I have for you guys. So have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.